Okay, so next up, we've got our arbor done. Um, and this will be where the bearings ride on these journals here. And then the saw, which is a 5 8 diameter bore here, will go up against, actually not here, but up against uh, the next two pieces we need to make. We're making the, the flanges, I guess is the best way to say, the arbor flanges. Um, basically, it's two discs with slightly different shapes. This one goes inside of this one, and the blade sits between them. And so this, this uh, inserted, ver uh, this, um, I don't know what the word is for it, but there's probably a term for this thing going into this thing with a blade in between is like a standard way for slitting saws to be held, um, and it allows you to com accommodate many different thicknesses of blades while still making sure there's a solid um, diameter to sit on because if you don't you just got threads here and you put a saw on there it's going to fall into those threads if it's thin so having a nice solid flat smooth surface for the blade to sit on is the biggest reason for doing it this way versus like a table saw where you just got a great big thick uh, saw plate that sits on the threads are fine in that case because it sits on um, threads that are tighter than the thickness of the pl saw plate so and they're I think acme threads so they're a little bit thicker but um, yeah so it's it's kind of this allows to accommodate up to about a quarter of an inch not quite a quarter and I may make these a bit longer just so I can accommodate that quarter inch but um, basically what we'll do is There'll be a bearing on this journal, and then we'll tighten that bearing down with the nut. And then the first ring, uh, this one here, will go on the, on the arbor like that. And then the blade will go on that. And then the second ring will go on top of that, locking everything in with one more nut. So that's what we'll do next. We'll do these little bits. I've got my little tiny piece of uh, inch and a half, um, and I'll get both pieces, both parts out of this. Um, and I'm going to try to keep it as large a diameter as possible because the bigger, the better, the more stable this blade will run. Okay, so uh, yeah, the other day, we were filming for part four, and oh, um, shit, I did it again. So, the I filmed a whole bunch of footage for part four, and after the first scene, in an effort to conserve the battery on my wireless microphone, I put it on standby. And it stayed there the rest of the day. I saved battery. But all of my footage has no sound. Anything after that first portion. So, here's an attempt uh, to remedy that. So I'm going to tell you the steps and cut to the footage I shot the other day because the footage is pretty good. I got some decent <clears throat> pieces uh, of the boring. There were good, good angles. I found some decent angles, so I don't want to throw the footage out. And I don't want you to have to jump through and, you know, miss a chunk of it. Um, so the first thing we did uh, was we take the blank. We took that shorter chunk of inch and a half uh, steel chucked it up and faced off one end. Okay, then we need to drill for the arbor. So here's the big, the big key here is all of these items, the, these are the flange elements uh, that hold the blades. So the idea is that you do every operation that stays concentric in one chucking. You don't want to take 
um, you don't want to keep rechucking things because they, they don't go all back together the same way. So the first thing is you do everything that is the same on that <clears throat> on that blank for both parts. That is drill, bore, uh, and then turn the OD as well so that they all match and they're all the same. They're all concentric with one another. And then you can do all the other features. The first thing we're going to do is going to drill for the arbor diameter. Okay, we've drilled. Now we're going to bore to the final dimensions and get a nice clean fit on that uh, arbor shaft. And the boring's done now, and it fits. The, the woodworking adage is cut your mortises first, cut your tenons second, because it's easier to sneak a tenon up. Well, in the case of the blades, we already got a hole, so we need to put the flange now, and we're going to turn the flange which is a 5 8 diameter. So that's the next step. Turn the flange, which is now going to be concentric to the hole that we just bored. So turning the flange. And now we're going to turn the outer diameter on all of the parts so that they're all basically the same. So we've parted off the flange and that part is done. We'll flip it around and turn the back afterwards. the the 5 8 hole in the washer that will fit the flange so the flange will go inside of the bore of the washer
and then we'll put a couple of chamfers on. Hooray, chamfers! Now we're going to test that fit, but we want to make sure it's fitting while on the arbor because that's the key. It's got to fit all together. So we're going to put the three parts together. And now we'll just take that washer, flip it around and part it off the original stock. This is no longer, uh, needing to be super concentric. It needs to be fairly square, but it did pretty good. Arbor, or the flange around in the chuck. Now we, we that first part we turn with the flange. We're gonna because when we parted it off, the back didn't look pretty. So we'll flip it around on the chuck, turn it, face it nice, and chamfer it pretty. All the parts are done. So here's what we got finished. So when you left uh, part three uh, the other day, we had a finished arbor, right? Nicely turned to diameter and uh, threaded really well all the way up to things. So then the parts we just changed, let's give you a full summary. So first of all, here are the parts we just, we just made. There's the, the washer and there's the flange. And you saw all this, the flange and the bar blade goes on, and then this goes on top of that. So now here's a summary of the rough, here's a summary of the whole assembly now. So far, a bearing will go on here, and it's a press fit, so I haven't pressed it yet. But just in case, I've also got a thread over here, and I will uh, put a nut on that if I have to. So there will be a washer, or a, 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 uh, a bearing right here, right in this, right in this area. And then there'll be a nut on that end as well, because this will be how I get things nicely snug to dial out the run out of any kind. That's that end of it. That's the back side. Um, and then we'll have our, uh, our gear will go on there. We'll actually have to come at it from this way if I put that bearing on there, huh? So this is a, a slip fit. Oh, it's a little off center here. It's a slightly slipped fit there and we're going to be drilling this and tapping it for a couple of set screws probably just to get it in there uh, in place and then of course this will be here to spin the blade right okay now with that on there we'll put a bearing on this end on this journal here and this one's a little bit looser if i can get it to start maybe not yeah, that's the other one. The other one is slightly looser. And we'll put that on there and then there'll be a nut pressing that in, you know, all the way up to this point. 
all the way up to this point, you know, or up into this area. These bearings are being housed in some half inch thick aluminum that will have a, a flange of their own. Now, all of this is here, right? Okay, we've got it all made up. Now there will be the bearing here and then a nut. So let's say that nut is somewhere in that area, right? Then we take that flange that we made and that goes on here, just like that. We're going to need a little bit more thread. That goes on there like that. And then the blade will go on there with the teeth oriented correctly for the direction of the rotation. That goes on there like that. <clears throat> and then this uh, washer will go on here like so. And then we'll have one last nut. I put that blade on backwards. It's going to spin the other way. Put this nut on there. And try not to cross thread. There we are. And that will be our slitting saw. Obviously, all the other pieces will be on here. There'll be a gear and a couple of bearings and a more, couple more nuts, or at least one more nut. And that is uh, a rough idea of what we have so far. Next up, we're going to start making the enclosure.